Luka Doncic left tonight's game against the Miami Heat in the first quarter after suffering an injury to his ankle. X-rays were reportedly negative, but Luka's status for the upcoming days and weeks is still to be determined after what certainly looked like from just video review to have the potential to be a significant injury. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what happened here with Luka Doncic against the Miami Heat, appearing to suffer a pretty significant looking ankle sprain. We'll break down the footage, we'll talk about the mechanism, the anatomy, which particular ligaments can be involved here, and then also talk about if we can in any sort of way predict how Luka might recover and how long he might be out for. Make sure and go subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with my future videos. Get those notifications turned on so you can be alerted as soon as stuff like this happens. Also, check out my Twitter page for more kind of real-time breakdown on some of these topics, and let's get started. While driving into the basket here, Luca's right foot stepped on Kendrick Nunn's foot and caused his foot to go into this inversion position that we commonly associate with a lateral ankle sprain. One feature of this that concerns me a little bit more is the fact that Luca didn't want to put any weight on this at all right when it happened, and we'll talk later on about why that might be significant. Let's go to our ankle anatomy to talk about which ligaments are involved here and try to correlate the exact mechanism of the ankle sprain to which ligaments might be injured. We're gonna try out using this new model tonight, guys. Let me know what you think, but here are essentially the key ligaments that I wanna talk about in relation to Luca's injury. This is a model of a right foot, so the ankle that Luca injured, and looking straight on here, this is looking towards kind of the front of the foot. This bone on the outside is the fibula. The one in the front here is the tibia. And then of course we have our foot bones, we have our toe bones, and then if we turn on the lateral side of the ankle, these are the ligaments we have to worry about with an inversion type of ankle sprain. Remember these ligaments are named for the two bones that they connect. This red one up here in the front is sort of your classic high ankle sprain ligament named after the bones it connects, the anterior because it's in the front, inferior because it's down low, tibial fibular ligament or AITFL. I will say this mechanism didn't look concerning for a classic high ankle sprain, so we're not gonna focus specifically on that one today. So let's take it off of here to kind of simplify things. Now we have the rest of our kind of classic three lateral ankle ligaments. This blue one here in the front is the one that's actually most commonly injured when these types of things happen. It's the anterior talofibular ligament because it runs from the fibula down to the talus, which is the bone kind of deep in there beneath the tibia. This is the ligament that's most commonly injured when someone has a lateral ankle sprain like what happened with Luca. Next, this ligament running down the bottom is called the CFL. It's the calcaneal fibular ligament running from the calcaneus, which is your heel bone, up to the fibula. And then if we look all the way in the back, we have the PTFL, which is the posterior talofibular ligament. And we're not gonna really focus on that one today as much either, because again, not very commonly injured in this scenario. So these are our two ligaments that we're really gonna focus on as it pertains to Luca. Which specific one of these ligaments gets injured more often depends on the position of the foot whenever you have the ankle sprain. This foot position you see here with Luca is called foot inversion. If the foot were to roll the other way, meaning the inside of his foot kind of went down to the ground, that would be an eversion injury. If you roll your ankle with your foot plantar flexed, meaning toes pointed down, you're more likely gonna tear the ATFL ligament because of the way that that position pulls on the ligament. On the other hand, if your foot is dorsiflexed, meaning the toes are pointed up, and then you roll it because of the direction that ATFL isn't under as much stress, and you're gonna put that CFL ligament at more higher risk of getting hurt. It's hard to say 100% between the two because we don't really see one of the extremes here with Luca, so you'd be thinking about both of them, but common things being common, probably lean more towards that ATFL. So walking through this as he's planting here, the foot steps on Kendrick Nunn's foot, which causes that ankle to roll. Whenever this happens, the body's neuromuscular system senses this altered movement and tries to fire the muscles around the foot to help prevent the foot from rolling in that direction. This is where sometimes it helps if people are wearing ankle braces and if they have higher cut shoes to provide additional stability. But as you can see in this situation, these muscles are not strong enough to prevent the foot from turning and you get this inversion injury. The other thing to think about too here, which is why it's really good that the x-rays were reportedly negative, is you can see how it almost looks like the outer part of his ankle here, specifically called the lateral malleolus, it's actually the fibular bone, almost looks like it smashes into the cork. This could raise concern for a possible fracture, so it's good that that was ruled out. So all things in this mechanism point to kind of your classic lateral inversion ankle sprain. Now to the question that I'm sure is on everybody's mind here, can we predict in any way how significant of an injury this is? Now that we heard the x-rays were negative, that takes one concern off the list for severity. Next, it's all about the degree of damage to those ligaments that I just talked about. There's different ways we can grade them. You might hear words like mild, moderate, or severe to indicate the degree of damage to those ligaments. 
but sometimes we hear grade one, grade two, or grade three. This piece of tissue represents one of those ankle ligaments. A grade one injury is gonna be basically small little, almost kind of microscopic tears and stretching in that ligament. But if you just look at it, it's really hard to tell there's been any damage. A grade two is gonna be more substantial where there's actually been what we would consider a partial tear of that ligament. And then of course a grade three is complete tearing of that ligament with separation. Obviously on the spectrum, a grade one is gonna recover much faster than a grade three. Players surprise us all the time when we look at just the severity of the inversion. And so looking at this with Luca, it's hard to say just because of how severe that he's got a grade one, a grade two, or a grade three. One of the initial indicators though that can help with prognosis is the initial weight bearing status. If someone's able to put weight on it right away, it can be a better prognostic factor indicating they might recover better and quicker as opposed to kind of what happened here with Luca where he was in so much pain he didn't want to put any weight on it at all and topped off the court on one foot as possible this was just because he didn't want to take any chances and he really wouldn't have been in that much pain but the fact that he hobbled off the court without putting any weight on it at all does make me a little bit more concerned that he could have a more significant injury and therefore have a more prolonged recovery. The next steps for the team is gonna be assessing the degree of damage to those ligaments. Don't be surprised at all if tonight we see Luca in some sort of a protective walking boot, maybe even on crutches, depending on how much pain he's in with trying to bear weight. The next couple days are going to be all about controlling the swelling, controlling the pain, and then starting to regain his range of motion. But certainly on top of all that, we're likely gonna see either like an MRI report or even an ultrasound that can be done to look at the integrity of those ligaments to see if it is a grade one, a grade two, or a grade three. But for all Mavs and NBA fans watching this, don't get too alarmed right away because players will surprise us in terms of how bad something looks on film versus how severe it actually is and how quickly they recover. I also mentioned this on my Twitter page that we've seen Luca wearing a lot of different styles of shoes. And I don't wanna say that that's anywhere to blame here because he stepped on a guy's foot. I don't think the shoes played a role, but in the setting of now having an injury to your ankle where all of those intrinsic muscles in your foot and around the ankle become extremely important, I think it would probably be beneficial for him to really solidify what style and type of shoe he wants to wear so that he can get used to it and really sort of kind of build up that familiarity and that neuromuscular feedback around his ankle to hopefully give additional support and stability. That's it for the video though, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments you have below. And until next time, we'll see you later.